Hey gang, Carl White here, broadcasting from the communications room here at the headquarters of the Mortgage Marketing Animals. Mm -hmm. And I am your host here, flying solo today on the number one podcast in America today for loan officers. Thanks to you guys. All right. Hey, so I'm I'm flying solo here. This is going to be a little bit of a quickie. I was um I was in the grocery store a little earlier today. And I was at the uh, checkout counter and, <laughs> and this poor young mother was in front of me with this five-year-old little boy. And this five-year-old little boy was relentlessly asking, I'm going to say asking for the business, right? And what I mean by that is what is that, what's, what's that one section that's always right there at the checkout, right? It's the, the, the candy and the, uh, you know, the gum is all always sitting there right there at the checkout, right? And this, this uh, I don't know, probably it looked like he was about five years old, uh, little boy was, you know, mama, give me this, give me this, give me, give me. And she was like, no, 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 no. And he said, mama, I, I want to get this. I want to get this. I want to get this. And and I mean, I was at the point saying, look, I I'll get it for him, <laughs> right? So he was being so persistent. And, and finally, you know, she gave in and she said, okay. And it got me thinking about something. So all right, so let me circle back around that here in just a second, and I'll, I'll I'll close this loop. The biggest thing I'm convinced, you probably heard me talk about this before, but the biggest thing that holds loan officers back is simply not asking for the business, simply not asking for the business. And I started thinking about that because let me tell you something. If at the end of every conversation, you simply ask for the business, you would literally literally close another three, four, five loans each and every month within the next 90 days or so, right? And, and we probably all know this at some level. So then why don't we? Why don't we ask for the business? Well, they know what I do. Um, I don't want to bug them. Like that's just all crap that's in our head, right? Trust me, we all know what McDonald's does. We all know what um, Walmart does. We all know what uh, Nike does. We all know what Ford does, yet they advertise to me. Right. Zero people on earth don't know what McDonald's do, yet McDonald's still advertises to me. They're still asking me for the business. And they don't even have a good hamburger. Right. It's just okay. Right. But they're relentless. They McDonald's asked more people to buy their hamburgers than any other entity on earth. And oh, by the way, they sell the most hamburgers. Why? Because they ask the most, they advertise the most. So then I thought, well, what is it that holds us back from asking for the business? And I'm convinced what it is. It, the biggest thing that causes us not to ask for the business is not feeling worthy of asking, not feeling worthy of asking. So this is a big deal. And um, this is not one of those things where you need to lay down on the couch and, you know, tell me about that thing that happened in the second grade, you know, where the teacher, I don't know, made you sit in a dunce chair kind of thing, right? Even though I think, I do think like things like that do cause a lot of damage. I, I don't think people understand the damage they cause when they do things like that. But, but I really believe the thing that holds us back the most is not feeling worthy of asking. The biggest thing, and I think the biggest thing that causes us to feel not good about ourselves is things people have said or, or, or things that we've done in the past that then somebody commented on, right, in a, in a negative way. So I think it's our past, our history, that somebody said some, at least to them, some small little thing that they totally forgot they even said, and, and, that, and, 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 and that thing has been weighing on you and, and keeping you from feeling worthy of asking for the business. And I, I might be off base here, but, but I think for many of you, I think, I think you'll, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So I think, so then I thought, well, Carl, how did you get over that? Because trust me, I've had my share of people say things to me in the past, right? We all have. And I started thinking about that and I thought, well, what is it that over that, that helped me overcome that? And I think what it was is forgiving myself for my mistakes, my blunders, and frankly, my bad choices in the past, right? Is forgiving myself for those things. In saying that, I'm, I'm reminded of a story that I tell sometimes about, uh, and those of you old enough to, to know this guy are going to know exactly who he is, Franco Harris. So Franco Harris was uh, a player for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And uh, this is back like in the 70s. And, um, and he's famous for one particular catch. He caught the ball uh, in a playoff game 
and um, and it's called the Immaculate Reception, right? If, if, if you want to say, see something really cool, go to YouTube and, and YouTube Immaculate, not Conception, but Immaculate Reception for where he caught the ball. It's pretty, pretty interesting play. Now, so he's famous for that one play. But let me tell you what he's not famous for. What he's not famous for is he actually holds a record for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And that record is having the most number of fumbles. In fact, if I remember right, his he he averaged more than one fumble per game. I think it was like he averaged something like 1.4 fumbles per game. So like every game, the dude fumbled. And, and some games twice, hell, maybe three times. But he's not known for that. He's known for that one reception. And when you, uh, uh, in, in the past, when you could go see him talk, he never talked about his fumbles. He talked about his one victory, right? And I think what it was is he forgave himself for all those fumbles and went on to do great things. And so I started thinking about that. And I think for our own selves, like what we do is we bring forward those things that we've done in the past that we're proud of, that uh, brought that did good things for people, that that we bring forward those things that we were proud of in the past, and we bring forward those lessons. And then I think at, at least as important and probably more is forgiving yourself for the stumbles, the fumbles, uh, leave those things behind that were mistakes. Just bring forward the lessons, right? Just bring forward the lessons. And so now I'm going to loop it back out, back around to this child that I saw in the grocery store. A young child can totally screw up, you know, in the parking lot on the way into the store and, and, and really, you know, do something that maybe, I don't know, bolt off in the middle of traffic or something, or, or, or maybe their brother hit their sister on the way into the store. And then, and that, and yet five minutes later, they're asking for some candy with great perseverance, right? Because they forgave themselves two seconds after they did that thing in the parking lot. And by the time that I got inside the grocery store and standing there at the counter, they think they're worthy of that candy or that gum that they're wanting to buy or that soda pop or whatever that is. They, they've forgiven themselves of the screw ups because they think they're worthy of that candy at the grocery store. And I think the, um, you know, I think the feelings of, I, you know, I make mistakes and I, I fall short um, and I'm not worthy. I think it's all learned because again, children don't have that because they immediately forgive themselves and think they're worthy of the new toy or the candy, regardless of what they did five minutes ago. And so the feelings of being a mistake or, or, or making a lot of mistakes or, or not worthy of asking for the business from this person, I think it's learned and not part of our natural selves. And so my take-home message for you today is learn from a child and forgive yourself and know that you're worthy of great business. You're, you're helping people. You're helping real estate agents get their commission check by pre-approving their people and providing them a great service at a fair price. Uh, you're going to follow up on them. Uh, you're going to help refer even more business to that real estate agent from the from the leads that they you know from the leads that they refer to you. You're going to close their loan, and you're going to ask them if they have any friends, family, and coworkers that are looking to buy, sell, or refinance. And those that do have somebody that's going to uh, they have a friend or family member that is looking to buy or sell a home. You are going to refer that back to the agents that referred you that client, and you are helping them close even more deals. And so. Um, yeah, I hope this message hit home. I hope it hit the way I want it to. The primary thing I just want you to know is you are worthy and you are deserving of great things. And, and it's okay to ask for them, right? It's okay to ask for them. Um, yeah, lessons from a five-year-old. I really like that. So, um, so that's it. You know, the other thing I think holds people back sometimes is they don't know exactly what should I say uh, when I'm talking to a, a real estate agent that's what top producer, or when I'm when I'm uh, I, I, I I've got uh, two deals going right now, and I have two different listing agents. 
Like, what do you say to those listing agents? How do you get those people to start referring to you? Uh, what do you say to your past database if they start referring to you? I just saw, uh, by the way, I just got a message um, about John Fortner. And uh, John Fortner uh, just had, um, uh, is it, having a great month. So get this. So from his past database, He's got four deals that are actively looking for a piece of property uh, that are four separate deals from four separate people in his past database that's looking for a new home. He's got one past database that, that called him up today and said he's looking to sell some property. So he's connecting them up with one of his agents. He's got one past client that is under contract right now. And that client just sent over two more deals. He's got three new referrals from agents this month from calling them. And he's got three deals in process with listing agents, right? So from, from the listing agents. So there's a lot of activity that's going on right now, as long as we're taking action and as long as we know what to say to get this to start coming into you. So if you want to, when you're ready to go over the scripting and how do I get these, uh, what do I say to these people and how do we get referrals to them and how do we build our business? Uh, man, I would love to talk to you about that. If you just simply go to freedomclubdemo.com, freedomclubdemo.com. Uh, we would love to uh, to do some scripting with you and show you how it works. So that's it. That's my uh, see. I'm I'm asking for the business. We'd love to talk to you. Uh, the catch is there's no charge to that. There's no charge to that call. Uh, we're just looking to see if we can help you. And I find the best way to demonstrate you can help people is to actually help them. So take a demo call of how we actually help loan officers. Freedomclubdemo.com. You're worthy of great things. I believe in you. And uh, we'll talk to you when you call in. And we'll also see you on the next episode of Loan Officer Freedom. Thanks again, everybody. Bye-bye.